today we're going to be talking about things we should be growing on a farm to be more sustainable to not have the food shortage or the food inflation prices really hitting us we're going to talk about the things that can grow the best that can give you the best bang for your buck and uh that's kind of our opinion on what we're growing we we've gotten to where instead of growing 50 60 70 different things in some of these beds we decided to grow five or six different things and then we'll play with a few other little items that we want to try for the next year we don't grow we grow in abundance we don't grow a hundred different varieties of food so i want to show you some of the things that we are growing that we believe is a game changer for your farm or for your home or for your potted plants or for your raised beds or whatever you're growing it's going to give you more abundance than uh, some of the other shrubs or crops that you're growing good morning welcome to the max you can hear the cows bellowing they know it is moving time they just got done milking and they're going to be going back to another field with some fresh grass fresh water i think they're excited about it So we give our rabbits organic alfalfa every day. It's just a handful because they're little bowls. That's all they eat, it's about a handful. We feed them shrubs from the ground. And we also feed them vegetables that we have in excess. Like for instance, they're eating asparagus spears right now. The brushy part of the asparagus that we don't eat. And they love it. They have been taking it down. Actually, they've been leaving a lot of their alfalfa and eating a lot of this, um, this asparagus. We like to feed them off farm, but the reason we keep them in cages and again off the ground for safety, but also we want to catch catch their manure, use their manure, good quality food either off ground that has been raised organic, or organic alfalfa to turn around and know that their manure is clean, pure. I hate to say clean manure. Is that kind of that's kind of stupid? Sorry. Allows it to know that it is a cleaner processed manure, where it doesn't have a lot of chemicals or a lot of GMO. Uh, properties to it we'll put it right back on the food that we're going to be eating then turns around and we eat what we don't eat we give back to them it's crazy very cool how that food cycle works and bunny's done we do have a broody hen that's in here that misty has been taking care of she's got plenty of water and feed we do incubate our eggs but we also when we have a chicken go broody we don't think it's a bad thing so we take it and move it into its own little cage and allow it to hatch its own eggs out we've had a pretty good success rate doing that another way to be sustainable to know that if we have broody chickens instead of trying to break the broodiness out of them use that for our good first thing we're going to talk about is potatoes we love growing potatoes potatoes are a great additive for your farm it allows you not to have a lot of work to do for your gardens because we only we raise these in raised beds we raise these in in-ground beds we raise these in hugoculture beds there's no wrong way to raise them especially if you have a very neutral soil if not you balance it out with lime and you balance it out with other things that are not chemical uh, and we use a lot of compost and that helps balance out the soil for potatoes potatoes for instance we have some growing right here we have some growing right here and we have some growing way over there they can put off so much so you're planting one half of a tuber which is a potato that you've let go to seed or basically make its own new seed and you may get five to seven of that ratio so say you plant so you take 10 potatoes you cut them in half you have 20 starts 20 starts times five you've got 100 potatoes just for 10 when you started so it gives you sometimes five tens and 20 times the value of what you're growing now you need to find what variety grows best for you like we've tried kennebec we've tried yukon we've tried all the yellows that you can imagine they don't grow good here so we grow reds reds are not my favorite however that is what grows best here so we need to utilize that every potato we have planted this year from here to here to way over there it's all reds the value of the potato is you can use it in so many different ways we freeze can of course eat raw and live we also can dehydrate and freeze dry potatoes they are a game changer on farm if you're not growing them you need to be growing them they tend to have to start really early in the spring or if you're in a cool area you can grow them a little bit 
later in the season but for us in zone 8b we start ours usually late january early february end of february early march depending on what part of zone 8b that you're in or what the freeze looks like for the season we planted ours a little early this year and we happened to luck out so they're doing good they're flowering right there this one little four by eight bed last year gave us hundreds of potatoes that's all it took to make hundreds of potatoes then you can turn around can you can eat live you can freeze you can dehydrate it's a game changer add those to your farm of what you're planning because with food prices going up even if you say there's no shortage which i believe there is a shortage coming but say there's no shortage look at the expense that you're going to be saving by because potatoes are expensive they're not cheap so if you're buying a bag of potatoes instead of buying a bag of potatoes you can have an amount of potatoes that's in that bag and plant and you'll be getting this kind of harvest so say for instance you have five four by eight raised beds you have you know 20 pounds worth of potatoes to plant you're going to make 150 200 250 300 pounds of potatoes and they are a heavy carb they allow you to have a good nutritional carb on your farm that's not junk food it's a game changer grow potatoes it's number one If you've watched us before you watch us a lot which thank you so much and if you're new to us please subscribe but if you know what we do we raise three forms of chickens we raise cornish cross which right now we don't have any on farm because we had a good harvest last year we raised three different sets last year and two different sets the year before and that gave us a surplus of chicken that we were able to can or able to uh, put in the freezer for us to use all this year and even parts of next year so we had a surplus of chicken. So we graze, we raise Cornish cross. We raise those strictly on land and movable tractors. Secondly, we raise roosters, ducks, and what we call our permaculture chickens. They're all on pasture too. And we'll see those were way over there in the pasture. They are simply helping our land. They do not eat a lot of feed or grain of any sort. They usually eat off farm, but they're also feeding our pastures for our cows to have better grass to graze for the next year heavy nitrogen loads you can't beat that thirdly we raise them just as you see like most people do chicken house this is where we get our eggs but also a great source of a nitrogen enriched compost or manure from the chickens so we take that out through their fertilization there we bed it then they turn around and mix that bedding in with their manure then we turn around and get all that out especially after heavy rain when it gets really cakey nasty junky that's when we like it because then we pull it out we're able to utilize it and mix it into our traditional compost or any dirt or lay right next to things that we are growing that helps us have a better garden for the next year and the next second we're in the no-till bed this is what we call our pea and bean garden we grow about 20 to 30 rows double stacked of peas and beans from soybeans that were growing on the other side of the farm at a moment you can use that in so many different ways people give a bad name to soy because it's one of those things that we have modified so much that we believe that we can only buy GMO modified and it's bad for you and it hurts our stomachs kind of like gluten flour and things like that well it's just like lactose milk if you're lactose intolerant a lot of those things the reason they're so bad for us we've taken them and we've processed them to make them bad for us all the stuff that uh, the government tells us that we have to do with our food ends up causing us a lot of issues so we, the, we're growing usually non-gmo or heirloom or organic versions of anything that we have on farm so these peas these beans so for instance over here this is like a pink eye purple hull over here this is like a henderson bush bean or a lima bean uh, on past it we have another row of a different kind of top pick mississippi pink eye uh, on the other side over there we have soybeans like a edamame because we believe that soybeans especially if they're grown in their natural source you can use them for so much and i'm not saying I'm, I'm gonna eat a veggie burger but soy can be utilized in so many different ways but for us we just like to steam them and eat them and they're very very healthy for you if you do them that way reason you want to grow those on farm and this is one um, they're not it's not the fact that you're getting a monster load of nutrients which you are it's not the fact that you uh, can't grow something else in this area, which you can. But the value of beans, peas, um, any kind of, uh, you know, string beans, contenders, whatever you're growing, it allows you to grow a lot off one plant. So we will actually harvest probably two or three pickings off these plants, and we will end up having 30 to 40 to 50 gallons worth 
of beans just right here in these few rows and then that's not counting the soybeans will probably grow another 30 to 40 gallons over there so you're growing a harvest again that you can turn around and freeze you can eat right off vine you can cook and boil down and have with a meal you can steam like the soybeans you can can you can dehydrate and you can dry again for the next year there's so many different ways you can utilize it soy we're not even going to talk about all the ways you can use soybeans because the world has taught us soy's and everything you don't need a lot of space if you're growing uh, in raised beds you can grow these in raised beds they don't go deep they don't need a lot of space uh, to grow they love growing together all these rows will pretty much close in and be right on top of each other we will be walking single file down these little rows basically i mean just like this once they come up they're not quite up yet but once they're up that's it you know what's so cool though what have we fed this with compost and rabbit manure that's all that we fed this area with this year last year the chickens were on it so we are we're utilizing what's on farm to turn around and feed what's turn around and feeding us then we're turning around and chopping dropping this back it's going to feed the soil or we'll take the tops give back to the rabbits and chickens number two behind number one potatoes number two peas and beans of all sorts because they produce an abundance fresh duck eggs they get to be moved every day on fresh grass we give them a little green but just entice them to move if you notice right behind where they're going it's a heavy manure load it allows it and then we dump the waters right there on that that area too so it just makes a good little bed of compost and manure and good deep bedding as the maneuver to the next spot and in a few weeks that'll be solid green so then the cows will come back graze it again drop their manure and of course the roosters and chickens and ducks will come right behind it pick through manure eat out of the manure as nasty as that sounds it's a very regenerative approach but it allows them to know that everything is getting cleaned everything is getting used and then our fields are getting refed by these animals that are partaking of them as you saw third is definitely corn now this comes with a a warning or a um kind of a just in case kind of thing corn comes we're going we're going to call this number three but at the same time we're going to kind of do a kind of a two number threes like i guess that makes sense if you have the land you need to grow corn corn is like soybeans it is it is a cash crop it's one of those things that everybody tends to grow in big farms uh if it be for you know biodiesel if it be for some kind of uh gasoline that we put in our car if it be for us to eat if it be for cornbread if it be for anything well, corn is so versatile corn on the cob it could be off the cob it could feed your animals not only are we using the corn but we're using the husk we're turning around using all the greens because the corn is a, is a grass so it's actually growing the corn is the byproduct so but all the greens all this right here will actually go to feed all our animals uh, at the end of the season i want to forewarn you if you don't have the land, we'll discuss kind of the second part of number two. Corn is, is definitely a nitrogen puller. If you're a conventional person and you're okay with using conventional fertilizers, which we don't, uh, you have to have a good nitrogen foundation uh, to start. And then you're going to basically halfway through when it starts getting about this, this tall, you're going to go ahead and, and literally refeed it to the side of it, make a trench, rebed it, pull the dirt close to it, and just put heavy nitrogen it's a hard thing with corn we actually are not great corn growers we grow what we can uh, we we enjoy growing it but we're still learning because we know we have to have so much more nitrogen than what we're pushing out so between the rabbits the chickens uh, we are actually putting a ton of nitrogen back in the soil cottonseed meal we can buy it organically we're also buying some organic blood meal to put in there because it's a slow release nitrogen booster however we're having to put a lot of amendments back into the soil but it is a game changer when you're growing it because not only are you growing corn and it's putting abundant off i have two patches of corn about this size and you can see some of it's growing better than the other we're fixing to refeed it now actually with some rabbit manure we're going to go through the rows try to put some of that chicken bedding that we talked about all down in here and it, it is hard to do and it's a, a lot of work but it provides a heck 
load of a lot of food that again you can eat raw you can eat live you can cook it bullet down cream corn corn on the cob but you could do so many different things when it comes to actually corn you can mill it down like a grain and then you've got cornmeal there's a value to it this is a sweet corn you can grow field corn uh, here in Mississippi, we can or South Mississippi in Zone 8B, I could grow actually two stands of corn. I can grow this corn, turn around and grow another set of corn somewhere else. Now, because it is depleting the nitrogen load, that's what we want to talk about is number two. I am going to turn around and grow the second part of it. It's going to be a nitrogen filler. It's going to be greens. We're going to put mustard greens back in here, which of course is great to eat as a superfood. We're actually going to put kale, mustard, collard, and turnips right here. If you don't have the room to grow corn, wait for the cool season and you need to be growing greens greens is number three two and the reason i say that is because if you're growing corn you've got to turn around and grow something else here for the fall season and the cool crops to then add nitrogen back to the soil and also keep the ground really fertile so we turn around and grow greens here which are collards mustards uh, kale and uh, of course some lettuces too but the value of that is not only are we eating the best quality greens off land, it's feeding the ground back. That's what you want to make sure you're doing. If you're having corn, you need to be feeding the ground back in some form or fashion. Corn, not only is it providing the corn, all the greens, of course, we're utilizing too. It can be chop and drop, but most of, most of all, it can be for feeding animals, such as making a silage or basically just throwing the corn stalks in with the cows, the, uh, the chickens, the, the pigs, the sheep, everybody eats it. Now, when we talk about the greens, say you can't grow the corn, wait for the coolness, grow the superfoods in the greens. Kale is a superfood, you can add, do so much with it. It has so many benefits to it. Uh, the mustard greens, again, if, wherever you're growing it, you're adding nitrogen back to the soil. You're able to then harvest it and eat it. Uh, also, the same way with the turnips, you've got turnip greens that you can turn around and use the roots, actually the turnips itself. You can can, you can boil down, you can eat, you can stew, whatever you wanna do with them. Two part number three grow the corn for the hot season then turn around and grow the greens or some kind of nitrogen and, and richer back in this same area that you can turn around and eat so corn or greens because there's so many benefits to even the lettuce and things like that that you can grow in areas and you do not need a lot of space we grow lettuce 12 months out of the year even in a hot climate we learn to grow things like our our butter crunches that we like from Hoss tools uh, which we'll have a link to Hoss tools down below but also we grow the coastals the murials uh, a lot of the hot seeded lettuce that tends to not bolt as quick even in our hot climates and we grow them in the shade areas number three growing corn if you're not growing corn you need to grow greens if you are growing corn still grow greens in the cool season fourth item that you need to be growing in your gardens or on your rooftops or on your patios or even inside and people are going to be surprised by this but it's herbs herbs and seasonings in your gardens herbs have such a great value on a farm they do not need a lot of space at all you can pretty much grow herbs all year round especially if you're growing them indoors on porches or can move them in and out we have a greenhouse so we grow herbs literally 12 months out of the year now do we grow herbs in the ground absolutely uh, our yarrow our calendula our parsley our cilantro all that stuff is growing in ground right now then we have several that's strictly growing in the greenhouse a lot of things about the herbs is not only going to give you flavor you're not making sausage with sage all the time you're not making a great italian pesto or italian sauce or a spaghetti sauce those things are really good and we want to utilize those because it helps you balance out your palate with good quality foods that taste different and allows you not to have the, the monotonous flavor especially if you're eating off farm a lot you can change it up a little bit so that's one good thing about eating herbs and seasoning or growing herbs and seasoning however what it what we grow them for is medicinal benefits misty is supposed to do a video on how we uh, what we do with a lot of these herbs from you know tarragons to yarrow uh, to cilantro to parsley to even the green chives uh, some of the flowers that you see here even to some of the other things that we're growing it all has purpose and allows us to know that if we're growing it we can utilize it in different ways we're growing rose because we're growing rose hips we're growing echinacea we're growing all these beautiful herbs that you see all through this greenhouse all for purposes not only to season our food but also for health benefits if you're making salves you have calendula if you're wanting something for skin soothing you may use lavender uh, rosemary we've used for different rubs and different oils it's got so many different benefits to it and you need to of course research it don't just be 
uh, lackadaisical in your approach with herbs don't just plant them for prettiness but understand there's value in all that you plant from oregano's to these rosemary's to the lavender over there in the corner to another rosemary to more parsley all here instant gratification because it grows really really quick but also you can harvest it for instance one of the easiest things to grow is basil basil and marigold together sorry guys i'm turning the water off Ugh. basil and marigold together we grow with a lot of other plants as companion planting it allows them to deter a lot of the things like bugs and slugs and snails that come up and eat a lot of your shrubs or eat a lot of your other vegetables that you're growing for companion planting supplemental things such as seasoning of your meat more than that is because it gives you the benefits of medicinal value to a lot of the things that you're growing right here we have a lot of herbs on farm and there's value to all of them don't grow them just to grow them but grow them for value not for just food but for medicinal benefits and also for your health so I'm finished with the chores. I'm finishing up with the uh, pigs here in the pig forest, also the cows in the back. We've talked about four different crops, actually five if you count the two for number three. It's a little complicated, I'm sorry. Things that you need to be growing in your gardens from potatoes, peas and beans, corn and greens, and then number four, of course, your herbs. I know that sounds like a lot of stuff, and it is, and it's not gonna come easy. It's hard work. But when you talk about raising food for your family to, to be inflation proof, to say, you know what, I don't care if a food shortage is coming, I don't care if we can't get this or that from Walmart because we're growing it on farm. That is what's awesome. To have that sustainability, to have the stewardship to say, I'm gonna use my land wisely, and then turn around to have the satisfaction to say, I'm eating off my grounds, off the plate, it's feeding my animals, and it's yummy. And I don't have to depend on the big box stores to provide my food. That is what's awesome. So if you enjoy this video, let me know. Tell me, other than these four, five, six, ten, whatever I mentioned in this video, what are you growing that you think that could be really good on farm? I know people talk about squash, zucchini, tomatoes, all those are great. Okra, very good. We enjoy all those and we grow those on farm. However, either because their abundance is not there or because you can't utilize them in several ways, they did they just tended not to make the survival four crop list. So we hope you enjoyed this video grow what you can grow where you are whatever space you have you need to be utilizing it and not only that making sure you're taking care of your family god bless happy homestead